Thank you. Do you believe that you're more than a part of the world? Do you believe that you are a part of a greater whole, valuable, needed, maybe a dancer in heaven's ballet? Do you really believe? Do we really practice that we are part of the world? Those who have a full-bodied experience of this practice live in a world of abundance. They live in a world of prosperity. And we demonstrate our aspect of being part of the world through the law of circulation. One, two, three, prosperity. The next three Sundays, we're going to be exploring tools for unlocking and awakening greater degrees of prosperity and abundance. Are you ready? <sighs> There's a story that's been going around. A very successful attorney parked his brand new Lexus in front of his house, ready to show it off to his colleagues. As he was getting out, a truck came along too closely and completely tore off the driver's door. Fortunately, a cop in a police car was close enough to see the accident and pulled up behind the Lexus with his lights flashing. Before the cop had a chance to ask any questions, the attorney started screaming hysterically about his Lexus which he had just purchased the day before. It was completely ruined and would never be the same, no matter how any car body shop tried to make it new again. After the lawyer finally wound down from his rant, the cop shook his head in disbelief. I can't believe how materialistic you lawyers are, he said. You're so focused on your possessions that you neglect the most important things in life. How can you say such a thing, the lawyer asked. The cop replied, don't you even realize that your left arm is missing? <laughs> it was severed when the truck hit you. Oh my God, screamed the lawyer. My Rolex! Now, I got a lot of love for a lot of lawyers. I know great lawyers, and so we're, we're not stereotyping here. It's the consciousness of the idea, right, though? Who has, who has heard lessons and teachings on prosperity that you feel like have the vibration of that story? That, in fact, maybe have such a vibration of lack of centeredness or of mixed values or of shady priorities, that you're just not really even interested in the teachings or the talking about prosperity. Anyone heard anything in that ballpark in that area? A lot of people have been turned off to the principles and the conversation of prosperity teachings because of its focus. I am a, no no a novice potter, very playful potter. And every time I go to the wheel, I start with a piece of clay, pack it together, and I have to slap it down on the middle of the wheel. And here's the important thing. If I don't get it on the middle of the wheel, forget it. Right? Has anyone ever thrown? If you've thrown, you know what I'm talking about. You almost have to take, it's like, it's like the first part, it's like, it must be like a batter going up to bat and just really getting that center and really having that focus, right? But you have to take everything and intend on that moment being grounded, centered, and perfect, or else all else will be a mess. All else will be wasted energy. All else will be futile. And you have to sit there on the wheel, really, for me, grounding one arm so fiercely, that you're just, all you can think about is, am I centered? Am I in the center? And holding that piece of clay as the wheel goes, so that then all the rest of the work can unfold. Amen? You hear the prosperity teaching here? That, I believe, is a fundamental key to any teaching of abundance. It must be grounded and rooted and centered. 
when it's not, we may have a lot of money. We may have a lot of things. We may seem to be swimming in a field of stuff. But what is that if it lacks center? What is that if it lacks God? What is that? if it lacks a dedication and a lifting up to the greater universal life force that blesses all beings. It's an exciting topic for me. One of my favorite passages in the Bible that I go back to in any times of trouble is this. In my words, it's fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's great pleasure to give you the kingdom. Fear not, little flock, Sometimes I feel like that. I feel like the little flock. Okay, fear not, fear not. Just that nurturing, nourishing presence. It's in Luke 12, 32. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father or your source has been pleased to give you the kingdom, the queendom, the all. Has been pleased. And in fact, that source has such pleasure because we are all a part of it. The activity of source intends circulation, intends flow, intends the abundance that is referred to as the kingdom. But it's certainly not so that we have closets full of junk, right? And anyone that's noticed that when you get more things, you have more responsibilities, may think it's not also about (laughs) filling a lot of other things. So how do we begin from center? One of the first steps is to get really, really clear. What is prosperity to you? Are you clear? Are you crystal clear on that? What is prosperity to you? When our idea of that which we are being the space for goes in many different directions, it can leak energy. It cannot be as powerful as knowing a great idea and saying, sweet, infinite, spirit, infinite, presence, substance of the universe, flow through this in myriad ways. To some people, having a huge house in a big city may be prosperity. But to another, the fact that you have to lock that door and protect that stuff is not the definition of prosperity. So what is your definition of prosperity? What does prosperous living look like for you? Take a moment to breathe into that question. If the only thing that comes to mind is money, we're seriously limiting ourselves. If the only thing that comes to mind is money, we're seriously limiting ourselves. And... If money is an irrelevant part of the picture, then there's probably some work to do there. Because money is simply an agreement we have to share and prosper each other. No? So we don't need to be afraid of it. It can be part of the picture. I invite you to a moment of closing your eyes and just breathing into any visions, feelings, emotions, thoughts, pictures that come to your mind when you think of abundance and prosperity. Just let it have its way within your being. Take a moment to do that now. Breathing, inhale and exhale, and just as if you are the movie maker, breathe into abundance and prosperity. And I invite you into the words, and so it is. I want to share with you a few readings from our unity history found in Heart-Centered Metaphysics by Paul Hasselbeck about prosperity. From Charles Fillmore's book, Prosperity, The Law of Increase. There is a universal law of increase. It is not confined to bank accounts, but operates on every plane of manifestation. The conscious cooperation of humankind is necessary to the, f- to the fullest results in the working of this law. 
You must use your talent, whatever it may be, in order to increase it. Have faith in the law. Do not reason too much, but forge ahead in faith and boldness. Paul Hasselbeck says, substance is divine energy, the invisible matrix from which all possible forms of supply develop. The divine idea of substance is everywhere present in its entirety. Substance is not matter, but it makes matter possible. The goal, Eric Butterworth says, should not be to make money or acquire things, but to achieve the consciousness through which the substance will flow when and as you need it. How does that sound? Prosperity, Paul says again, is neither riches nor poverty, but a state of consciousness superior to both. Neither riches nor poverty, but a state of consciousness superior to both. Now, when we're looking at teachings about prosperity, we probably all have our growing edges and our blind spots. So I thought I would share with you some of the growing edges and blind spots that I have noticed, that I have seen, starting with this one. If the thoughts come to mind about buying a lotto ticket, if the thought comes to mind, I need a financial miracle, make it happen, then there is a pause that we're being called to. And that pause is this. Am I willing to become the lottery ticket? Am I willing to become the lottery ticket? Am I willing to be the miracle? Now, in that implies that I have a sense of worth strong enough and a sense of faith bold enough and a sense of conviction centered enough to meet everything else that says that's not possible and to move through it. We are called to become that which we wish to create. If we have ideas that somehow someone has to lose, beg, steal, or borrow for me to have, If we've heard ideas like money doesn't grow on trees, which in fact is not even true, if you ask a farmer from an avocado farm tree farm, right, or someone that grows nuts or someone that grows apples, they would say, actually not true. Money does grow on trees. It absolutely grows on trees. It's not enough to have these ideas without practicing them, without being willing to fully walk the path of expanding and expressing them. See, it's not about what we think it is on the surface. It's never about the material things. Anytime we have a lesson on demonstration, it's never about the material. It's never about the effects. It's about how do I have to grow, what do I have to know, what do I have to embody to be that flower that flourishes, to be that blossom, to be that bloom, to be that abundance. Because I live within that beingness. And if it is not grounded and rooted and a part of that beingness, then it is always something I will be pulling at somewhere else to have. And in that, lies a consciousness of lack or separation, a consciousness of need and prosperity can't birth out of a consciousness of wanting and need and thinking that it's outside of us. Money can, stuff can, but abundance of all things God is born from a consciousness that is a raised vibration of the God field, of God consciousness. 
We must understand principle, understand what substance is, and understand the language of the field of consciousness within, within which we live. See, principle says that if I activate a law, that there are laws of this universe, and if I activate it, if I tap into it, this law, then there will be sure and direct results. So there is a law of prosperity, there is a law of circulation, and it has to do with getting in tune with the gifts that we are, nourishing them, nurturing them, and then knowing that there is an infinite intelligence, that in fact we live in a field, in a matrix of infinite intelligence that orchestrates and organizes everything in perfect order, in perfect harmony to maximize every moment. When we tap into that principle, when we know it, when we activate it, and when we use it, abundance is assured. The next is understanding substance. Understanding that there is an idea behind everything that tunes into the idea of the gifts that we are. It tunes into the principle and the practice that when we're praying for ideas, we're utilizing the currency of God. The ideas that come to you and come through you are gifts from God. They're here to be used fearlessly, bravely. The next is understanding the language. And that's a big one. We're going to explore that on and on. Because the language that we use in our own field of consciousness is very powerful. And when we're not experiencing the kingdom or the queendom or the field that we feel saturated in God, there is probably something we're not understanding about our God language, about the language and the vibration that we're putting off. Charles Fillmore said, men who accomplish great things in the industrial world are the ones who have faith in the money-producing power of their ideas. The money-producing power of their ideas. But an idea that is laid to rest, an idea that just circulates over and over in consciousness, an idea that is not acted on, is an idea that is stale and dry when it comes to money, when it comes to source. But an idea that is acted upon, that is truly for the greater good, is an idea that flowers and blossoms in ways that one could not even direct if they tried. In ways that can bring us to our knees in gratitude for the intelligence of life, in gratitude for the working and the flow God sends ideas. We draw ideas. Deepak Chopra talks about it as eavesdropping on the mind of God, eavesdropping on that infinite consciousness. Let us not take that practice lightly. We are in every moment when we're aware of principle, when we are aware of substance, and when we are aware that we are co-creators, we are in every moment present to the perfect design of abundance. There is no point or space in this universe or in our lives that it's not here. The moment we think we've found some place where it doesn't exist, simply a curtain has been drawn. Simply there is a limited idea or a belief that separated us in idea, in Activity, but not in reality, not in truth. Eric Butterworth says, The whole of God's substance is present in its entirety at every point in space at the same time. Not just some of it, but all the substance in the universe is present at any point of human need. There is no place on earth where there is an absence of substance. Can we breathe into that truth? 
It is ours to let that truth have its way within our being, to let it have demonstration. Charles Fillmore in Keep It True Lent said, just as the earth is the universal matrix in which all vegetation develops, so this invisible spirit substance is the universal matrix in which ideas of prosperity germinate and grow and bring forth according to our faith and trust. So what's another one of those sticking points? Let's get practical. We've all had ideas, right? We've all practiced principles. We've all prayed. We've all tuned into the idea of God as source. So what are the edges of the limits and the blind spots? One that I have seen so many times is attachment. If I give, if I circulate, if I try, and I don't get back from that same spot, or I don't get the feedback or the invitation that I want, if I don't get the paycheck that I want, the energy goes down. It didn't work. There's no place for me. I'm impoverished. I'm alone. I don't get it. Are we willing to give up our attachment to where the good comes from and simply focus on our giving it? See, I have a practice, and I teach this practice, where any time you share, know your worth and know the value of whatever it is you're sharing, and know it so strongly that you trust, you absolutely trust that the great good is coming back in circular motions to and through your life to grow and expand and in no way take your eyes and your knowing off that beautiful truth. But oftentimes what happens is people make an agreement with the outer form. They make an agreement with what they see. It didn't always work. I didn't get anything from this. I just gave my whole heart and nothing came back. Do we care about the avenue or do we care about the practice? We must believe more in God law than the prosperity of those around us and among us than the prosperity of our employer, than the prosperity of our banker, than the prosperity of the economy, than the prosperity of the systems in which we're saturated in? Do we believe more firmly in God law than in any external appearance, than in any other agreements and activities that we see around us. When we do, I promise, and I don't promise a lot of things, but I can step out on a promise that when you do over and over again, we will see that the flow comes in. I have had too many experiences where there was an activity I gave freely, I trusted not knowing where it was gonna come from, and bam, it came from the back. Bam, it came from the side. And it was so much more glorious, it always is every time, than thinking you know what's going on. Than thinking you know how it's gonna come. You could do one activity and think, well, I should be probably charging $300 for that and maybe get two. Is your heart going to be disturbed? Or are you going to know the value of the gift? Because when we know the value of the gift, we turn a corner and we may think, the value of that's about $2. And then all of a sudden, what comes in? 300, right? 
It's being in the flow of life and it's trusting with such diligence, with such conviction that anything around doesn't disturb it. And that even times maybe when it is disturbed, you just take a moment to breathe into the heart center and know God is my source and source is everywhere present and I simply need to keep my attention on activating and giving and being in that flow. And I receive gratefully, gratefully, gratefully. It's about God consciousness. When we have really done these previous steps, when we check in, we feel good when we give, right? We feel so good when we give, and we begin to give not because someone's paying us, not because someone's telling us to, because we find ourselves awake in the middle of the night doing it. We find ourselves awake in the first hours in the morning planning our gifts, sharing, constantly discerning, saying which ideas, which ones should go into motion. And we actually become like people on a playground. And the fact that we get paid for being on the playground is an absolute bonus. Are we ready to live that life? So here's a step, a real practical step for this week. Start to watch this week. Start to watch your vibrational field. Start to watch your consciousness. Because the universe doesn't just hear in words. A lot of times when people are working prosperity principles, they're working the principles because they want more. But what can come along with wanting more are funky little energy spiders like fear, lack, greed, lack of center, where you just get a sloppy mud pile with a bunch of water and nothing's coming out of it. Even envy. Think for a moment about the energy of envy and think about the language of God consciousness or the language of the field of vibration energy that we all live in. Envy says this to a human. I want that and I'm mad I don't have it. I want that I don't understand why I can't get it. Why do they have it and I don't? That's probably never going to happen to me. This is not a giving universe. Just think for a moment of all the things that come up. Now, what the God consciousness is saying is, I see something vibrant. I see something abundant. I see something prosperous. I'd like to have that. Now think, if you didn't work in human terms, if you didn't work along the lines of that conversation, what do you think the message is? With envy. Sitting right before a demonstration and a demonstrator where we could learn and we could say, yeah, that's someone demonstrating. We get all these funky conversations going in our minds like, Well, that's just a waste of money. I would never spend that much on a pair of shoes. Has anyone ever? Right? To make ourselves feel better or whatever it is. Like that, 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 that. And we put out those criticisms and judgments. But really what those are are just ego conversations that put out a vibration that says, wrong, don't want it, get it away from me. Rather than putting out a vibration of saying, ah, demonstration. This is how I would utilize that flow. Ah, demonstration, bring it on. I like to see the abundance of God in all things. Maybe I wouldn't do that, but I like to see the abundance of God in all things. Think about the field. Because what we do when we enter into envy, and I bring up envy first because it's one of the first things that happens when we're looking at prosperity principles. There is often a pushing away And the universe just hears in, ooh, that was a bad emotion, 
Ooh, when I see that, that doesn't feel good. Ooh, when I see that, I don't want it. Ooh, when I see that, that doesn't look good. Ooh, when I see that, I'm judging that to be wrong or bad or whatever it is, or I feel bad, or I just, I just, when I see that, I don't feel happy. So then what does my most intelligent center of my being say? Well, let's just keep you away from that, you sweet thing. We're not gonna put you into something you wouldn't be happy in. Come so far over here. Come here, come here. Are we far enough away from it now? Are we far enough away from it now? We must learn the language of the field. It's ours to learn the language of a yes, and not a yes that goes along with our ego minds that says all this stuff, but a real full-bodied mind, emotion, thought, picture, vibration, yes. So here's the switch for the week. It's the week of fireworks, and we are the fireworks this week. The fireworks lead to the freedom, and any time we have ideas or thoughts about the practice of prosperity, we see it showing up in our lives and in our world. We take the energy when we see it pushing away, and we let the fireworks go off. Just burst it out, clean the slate, and then consciously step in to the field that resonates with yes, bring it on, that's for me, here we go, I love it, I can demonstrate it, I can use it, I will circulate it, amen. Namaste. So let us consciously, joyfully, creatively engage in the law of circulation. Taking our tithes and our offerings in our hand, knowing that we are abundantly blessed and knowing that this circulation practice is part of our absolute consciousness of knowing that we are part of a greater whole and a greater good. And that as we activate that, we feel it. And as we feel it, we know that we are safe, secure, peaceful, satisfied. Together, let us bless these offerings. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Safe, secure, peaceful, satisfied. Safe, 